What is it all made of? That's a pretty fundamental question. Well, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, devised a thought experiment to try and explain this. Imagine taking a piece of cheese and chopping that piece of cheese in half. You've got half a piece of cheese. Now cut that half in half. Got a quarter of cheese. Cut that in half, an eighth. Then a sixteenth, a thirty-tooth, and so on. And keep cutting that piece in half until you have a piece of cheese you can no longer cut up. That is an atom of cheese. An atom comes from the Greek word atmos, which means indivisible. So they have given us the word for something that cannot be cut up, an atom of a substance. And that is the model that prevailed throughout 2,000 years of history, until new evidence meant that scientists had to look for new ways of explaining what things were made of. Chemistry found that atoms bonded together because they were donating something. They were donating something called an electron. So, for example, lithium donates one electron to fluorine and that helps them bond together. It's called ionic bonding. And they found that these patterns were linked throughout all the elements that they found and they organised the elements into the periodic table. Also, another new phenomenon was the idea of electricity. And here you can see Benjamin Franklin getting electrocuted as he flew his kite in a storm. So to explain these two phenomenons, chemical bonding and electricity, Thompson came up with the plum pudding model. That is to say that atoms could be thought of as like a plum pudding. A plum pudding is a cake. It's a cake which has raisins in it. So here you can see I've opened out an atom to show you how they felt atoms were. Mainly, the atom is made of positive cake. There are some negative electrons floating within that. So in the analogy, in the model, we have the cake being the positive part and the raisins being the negative part. And it's only the negative parts that can move from atom to atom or through conductors in electricity. This is the plum pudding model. And that again was absolutely fine and explained all of chemistry really. Atoms just being different sizes of cake with different numbers of raisins. Rutherford devised an experiment to prove the Tom Thompson plum pudding model. He took a piece of gold foil and an alpha particle source. Inside a vacuum chamber, so there was no air particles to get in the way, the alpha particles would fly towards the gold foil. He expected them to either stick onto the gold foil or to be kind of deflected around inside and lose all their energy. He did not expect them to reach the detector on the far side. He was astounded when most of them, about 99% of the alpha particles, went straight through the gold foil. The gold foil is very, very thin gold. But he was still amazed because little pieces of cake shouldn't be able to fly through the cake, uh, the plum pudding model. So he had to readdress the model and change the model based on the new evidence. He still hadn't found them all though, He'd only found 99% of those that left the alpha particle source. So he moved his detector up and down on the far side of the gold foil. And he found another 0.99%. But he still hadn't found them all. And he was astounded when he found that some of those alpha particles had not gone straight through or deflected through small angles, but had deflected back the way they came. He said this was absolutely amazing. As surprising as if you fired an um, artillery shell at a piece of tissue paper and it bounced back and hit you in the face. So these three observations are what you're going to need to remember about the Rutherford alpha particle scattering experiment. And you should link them to the three conclusions that he made. First observation, most of the alpha particles go straight on. And the conclusion with, which is linked with that is that most of the atom must be empty space. Most of the atom is nothing at all. Two, 
a few of them were deflected through small angles, had their tracks bent slightly. And the conclusion that with this, there must be a concentration of positive charge. They knew the alpha particles were positive. And then three, very few were deflected back the way they came. And this was the really surprising one. And this meant that most of the mass had to be concentrated in a small, very dense nucleus at the centre, probably, of the atom. So he expected to see this, the alpha particles not getting through the cake-like atoms. What actually happened was this, that the most of them, number one, went straight on through. A few of them, number two, were deflected through the small angles, but carried on through nonetheless. And very, very few of them actually almost collided with something with a lot of mass and positive charge and reflected the way they came. This and some other experiments led to the development of the Bohr model. The Bohr model is the most um, accepted model of the atom today. It states that all the positive charge is located in the nucleus and that these are because of positive particles called protons. In the nucleus and accounting for the rest of the mass is neutrons, which are neutral particles. They have a charge of zero. And that orbiting these, this nucleus at different energy levels are electrons, which carry the negative charge, so that each atom has an overall charge of zero. I hope that helped you. If it did, please do like the video, subscribe to my channel, and please tell your friends. I'm going to eat this cake now.